Good morning, my awesome friends and followers of this wonderful channel. And not forgetting the members, thank you all very much for your continued support. And on this direction, in this direction of transparency. But if you're watching this video right now, you've not yet subscribed. Why not? It's free. Yes. And it's Wednesday. Wednesday the 13th of November, which means in the Colt household, it's handover takeover day. Sebastian's gone to school. His mum's dropped off his stuff. I've made a pot of soldier on coffee. I've only had one cup. I don't know about you, but in the morning I make a cup. I make like a percolator of coffee. And it's, you may think this is crazy, but unless I have Gwen here, Gwen, Gwen likes to use the Nespresso, which is the little pods. I don't like it. I don't like it. When she makes it, I go, hmm, oh, thank you. But I don't like all these George Clooney shit. I just don't. Me, I just want a cup of coffee with milk. That's all I want, coffee with milk. So soldier on coffee's my chosen drug, actually. Yes. Right. So what's happening? Emails are coming in. I've got a niche to blow my eye now. What does that mean? I have to get a book. Maybe I get a book for Christmas, which says what do things mean? Like itchy nose and all this stuff. Anyway, there we go. But yeah, it's going to be a fantastic day. And do you want to know why it's going to be a fantastic day? Because that's a mindset I have set for myself today. I have. I have seen photographs come in today from Instagram with my son uh, modelling clothing down in London. It looks awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Proud dad. Proud dad moment. Yes. Um, right. There's a few things I need to discuss this morning. Now, one of the stories in today's paper makes me chuckle. Now, listen, ladies, ladies, calm. I'm just saying, men, calm as well. Those that identify as both, even calmer. The other day I said that Gary Lineker had decided to retire from the BBC. I'm not sure if he was pushed. I'm not sure if he left. But he's cut, he's cut ties with the BBC. Now, the BBC had lined up six ladies, six ladies, to fulfil his shoes. Very, very strange, match of the day. Now, I don't care what people think. I'm going to give you my opinion based on my knowledge and experience. Match of the day, whether you like it or not, is a man's sporting programme. Over the years, it's been changed to inc inclusion of women. But what you are getting is this. Men and all these professional players with experience that have won European Cups and World Cups and Champions League give their opinion based on their knowledge, what it took them to get to that level and how they competed at that level. And they can see, they can read the game. But over the years, we have changed to include women that play football. But what you're getting is women that play football nowhere near that level of Champions League and World Cups in this critiquing men on the pitch, which I think is wrong. I do believe women commentators should critique women footballers. 100%. I do believe that men shouldn't critique women footballers. I don't. However, it's been happening. So Mark Chapman, who's a great match of day presenter, was told that he's going to have a new co-presenter, which is going to be a female. Mark Chapman has says, I'm not doing much today anymore. I don't want to do it. I don't want to share my knowledge with, the, with this, with whoever you've got lined up. Why can't we have Alan Shearer? Why can't we have Alan? He's saying, why can't we have, we've got about 15 professional international players that have played top level Champions League sitting there and you're ignoring these fantastic legends of football to replace it with something to do with equality and diversity. He says, no, I'm not having it. Uh, I quit. And do you know what? I'm going to say something. Well done to Mark Chapman, because you need to stand up to this nonsense, don't you? You need to stand up to the nonsense. And someone needs to hit back and say, no, enough is enough. Stop it. There we go. That's my opinion anyway. Stamp it out. Yeah. Oh, and the Archbishop of Canterbury. Yesterday I tried to mention that in a separate video and it had loads of restrictions. The Archbishop of Canterbury. Now, a friend of mine that lives in the US is only hearing one side of the story, the media type story. They're not hearing the ins and outs of this. The Archbishop of Canterbury has resigned. Um, it's not the fact that 
Why didn't the police investigate this? It's the fact that the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, found out that there was abuse happening within the Church of England and he quashed it. He didn't inform the police so they could carry out an investigation. The person that was carrying out this abuse has now passed away. So he, the victims will never ever see justice. But in my opinion, I believe the police should prosecute the former Archbishop of Canterbury. They should prosecute him for hiding child abuse within the Church of England. Um, it's quite sad that a lot of people turn to God whenever they're not well, whenever they're in need of help or whatever. They do, they do, but whether they do. A lot of people turn to the church because it's a sanctuary. It's a place where vulnerable people are meant to be protected. And for some reason, the church has lost its way. It has. Um, the most vulnerable people that go to the church can't seek sanctuary there much longer, can they? Or can they? Imagine turning to church because you're being abused at home and you turn to church for sanctuary and you get abused in church. Sad, sad times, isn't it? And church will protect themselves, as Archbishop of Canterbury did. He put the Church of England's. He put the, he went, no, I need to protect the church, so we need to quash this. Yeah. The same person that preached, preached about Rwanda and about looking after the children and about looking after people and giving them sanctuary, knew, knew when he was telling us those speeches on TV, he knew that his own church were abusing people. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. No wonder people don't trust religion. In other religions, young children get married. For some reason, I'm starting to think that religion now is, religion is starting, starting to be, it's starting to come alongside evil, isn't it? In a way, in a way, not all of it, but in a way, the way it's, the way it's behaving. Oh, where do you go, eh? Where do you go? And what have I got here? The Princess of Wales. Yes, she's preparing for her Christmas Eve concert. I'm looking forward to that. That'll be good. Yep, back out. She's doing it straight after she, well, not on the same day, but once she finishes the rest of her chemotherapy, she'll be doing, preparing for her Christmas Eve con uh, carol concert. Uh, I'd love to go, actually. I need to find out more information about that. Yeah, probably security checks and everything to go anywhere near that, wouldn't they? Or else you'd have all the lunatics turning up from the Sussex cult. Uh... And the Russian president, President Putin, is trying to war game. He's war gaming the British, isn't he? He's got his warships. He's got a hypersonic missile frigate in the English Channel at the minute. Hmm. But we're too busy. We're too busy around the world stocking, trying to stop drugs and drug traffickers off Caribbean islands. We're too busy to protect our own coast, aren't we? Yeah. Wow, eh? Maybe, maybe if you had a warship in the English Channel, people wouldn't try and cross it. Just saying. Oh well. And Christmas is coming up. Listen, if you're gonna go shopping, make sure you take your own bags with you. Because if you remember rightly, shops put a price on bags, 5p, 10p, 15p. They put prices on bags. And the whole idea behind that was the fact that you would bring your own bags so it would be less plastic and less bags being thrown out. But shops have taken the piss. Bags are like 50p, 60p, one bag, bag for life. I mean, Morrison's have a paper bag for 45p. 45p for a paper bag. It's robbery. And you know what? I think I'm going to do this just to see the reaction of the person at the checkout. When I go through with my shopping and they go, do you want bags? I'm going to go, no, don't want any bags. And they just try and lift it all up. I says, I'm going to do... I'm just going to lift it all up in one pile and go, I'll be back in a minute for a second lift. And just to see the queue of people stand there and go, what's he playing at? I don't want to pay for a bag. And take out a, some, just take out bits and pieces, put it in the boot and come back in and go, take another bit, put it in the boot. I wonder what the face would be. Well, maybe you should supply bags free of charge, you greedy nerds. Yeah, that's what, that's what we should all do. Start doing it and then they'll start giving you bags because 
it's costing them money because people are having to queue up for longer and longer and longer and we'll get back to getting free bags again yeah. right i'm going to end this little video by telling us a little story um first of all you all know that i've written a few books um when I left the military, I didn't really have much. I'd been fighting compensation since 2014, so nearly a decade. Um, so I wanted to write my memoirs, but I didn't have the money. So many, many years ago, I did a GoFundMe and I raised two and a half thousand pounds and I was able to publish First Into Sign. Now, I raised money for that as well. GoFundMe, you raise money, you show people what it's about. Now, for a long time, when I was raising money to write that book, those idiots on X going, there's no book coming out, he's a liar, he spent the money, he's done this, and then it comes out and it puts people, it shuts people up. Well, a lady contacted me um, quite some time ago. Her name's Kim, K-Y-M. And she was asking me all these different ideas. She wants to write her memoir, she's got plans, she's this here, she's this mother, she's got children. How do I get money? Now, if I had the money, I would have just transferred it straight to her. I would have, but I didn't. And I went, well... I'll tell you what I did. I did a GoFundMe, Kim, and, and, and uh, I wrote about what the book's about, uh, what I'm trying to achieve. And she says, well, Trevor, I, um, I was a clinical mental health nurse and I've got PTSD and I've got issues. And I want to write about my story. I want to write stuff about my story, get my book out, do my memoirs. I want to buy a printing machine. I want to print T-shirts. I want to get the T-shirts out and so people can buy stuff. And I want to start, I just, I'm, I'm trying to start off from scratch. And I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll share your GoFundMe, uh, and I've got a, I've got an unbelievable community on this platform, and I'll share. I'll talk a little bit about your story, and we'll see. Hopefully, you'll raise money. Um, hopefully, people will donate and help you. Um, ladies always support ladies. Uh, they always do, and if you're a decent person, people will help you. And last night I spoke to Fiona on the phone about this as well and Fiona said to me well Trevor you're always trying to help people but just bear in mind this may come back and you may start getting attacked again because it's another GoFundMe page I says I know Fiona but it's her GoFundMe and I, if I share her link and I, I tell people about her it's up to her so I have to yeah so listen I don't like to see people struggle I, I don't and if, if I can use my influence in any way for positivity I will always try and do that um, I wish Kim the best of luck. I hope she raises the two grand she needs to get the book published and all the bits and pieces. And yeah, it does cost about two, between two and three thousand pounds it costs to get a publisher to take your book on, take it and publish it and, and, and get it out to you. Uh, so yeah, and I know that from that book. So I wish Kim all the best. I hope you get behind her. I think I've done her link and stuff on my community page. Um, I'll put a link to her GoFundMe in the description of this video. Kim, if you're watching, I wish you all the best. I hope you succeed. It'll be a great Christmas present if you manage to raise the money and get the book out for the new year. Um, there's a lot of people out there with stories that deserve to be told and good luck. Anyway, people, listen, uh, that's me for the, my morning rants done. Uh, I'm going to go now and have my second cup of soldier on coffee. And what else am I doing today? Oh... I've been asked to go and cut Sebastian's mum's grass in the back garden. So I'll go over it. If the weather's not bad and the grass isn't that wet, I'll get it all cleaned up. Anyway, listen, have a wonderful day, everyone. And remember, stay safe. If people are getting in your head and there's people around that are causing negativity, delete, block. Delete them, block them, move on, move forward. Keep positive mindset and get rid of all the shit that's dragging you down. Have a great day, everyone. And stay safe.